Hello guys, my name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plane design. And today I will show you how to set a equilibrium reactor in Aspen High Seas and also Unisim design. But to do that, I will show you the production of the hydrogen using steam methane reformer in order that you understand the importance of knowing how to set a equilibrium reactor in your simulation. Before I start, let me invite you to know my other social media like YouTube, Telegram, LinkedIn, and I have a fan page in Facebook also. And more than that, in my website, jeffersoncosta.com, you find my blog where you can have much more information about chemical process engineering and plant design. The hydrogen has many applications and it can be a source of energy or use it as feedstock for many processes. And although the use of hydrogen as energy for transportation is increasing, its main use is as feedstock for chemical and petrochemical processes, and also for ammonia production, metal processing, glass manufacturing, and etc. There are many ways to produce hydrogen, but more than 90% of the production of hydrogen is based on hydrocarbons and we have many ways to do that. And in this video, I will show you the steam methane reformer process. As a chemical process engineer, you must know how to read a block flow diagram or a process flow diagram. And now I'm showing you how is the basic flow sheet of a steam reforming process. And we start with the feedstock, and it can be natural gas or a lighter gas. And depending on the gas composition, we add hydrogen to, to that to remove sulfur content at the desulfurizer. The gas without sulfur content goes to the furnace, and we need to remove that because the sulfur compounds can deactivate it your furnace catal catalyst, but before entering the furnace, we need to add steam to the process in order that the steam and natural gas goes to the furnace. And because of the high temperature and the catalyst that we have there, we have the reaction forming syngas. And syngas is the reaction that occurs between water and methane producing CO and hydrogen. This reaction requires a uh, lot of energy and because of that we have a gas at a high temperature that we need to decrease before sending that to the shift reactor. And as we need steam to add to the process, the convection section of the furnace is used to superheat the steam and the configuration of a company from another may change a little bit, but usually we use this heat to produce the steam in the plant. We need to remove the combustion gas from the furnace, and to do that we need forced or induced drafts to, to send the gas, the flue gas, to a flue gas stack. The syn gas at a lower temperature goes to the shift reactor, and it is where CO and water reacts producing more hydrogen and also CO2. The stream uses energy integration and we need to cool down that to remove condensate from the gas. Once we remove the water, the gas goes to a PSA system where we have vessels with a dissolvent that removes the contaminant from the hydrogen and we have the high purity hydrogen at the outlet of the equipment. During the regeneration of the PSA, the gas has a good content of flammables, so because of that, we have a tail gas drum that is responsible for recirculating fuel to the furnace, and in this way, we can save some fuel in the process. Some utilities for this process include the demineralized water. It is a special kind of water without, without minerals. 
because if we have them in the water during the vaporization to produce steam, they will deposit in the equipment and with that we will lose performance. Other utilities that we use is the instrument air to move the, the control valves in the system and also the nitrogen that we use not only to purge the system because of the hydrogen high flammability but also to pre-reach the system because we cannot introduce steam to the furnace at lower temperatures because the formation of nickel carbonyl. Nickel carbonyl is very dangerous for human health so we need to prevent its formation during the startup of the process. This is an overview of the process and you can observe to that to simulate a plant like that you need to know how to set compressors, heat exchangers and also vessel separators and reactors, the shift reactor and also the furnace because we have a reaction here also. And moreover we have pumps and drafts that is like a kind of, of compressor. And of course we have a lot of pipings from a way to another so it is very important also that you know how to set the piping system during your plant design. Before proceeding to our process simulation I will show you now some field installation and it is a kind of hydrogen plant production. It is a small one and this is the furnace. This kind of furnace which we call that CAM. So this is a CAM type and here we have probably the PSAs and it is from Lindy. The block flow diagram that you have seen is from Male, but there are many others sensors like air products and so on. And here you can see the flue gas stack. The next plant installation is bigger than the previous one. This is the furnace building and in this case we have a box type furnace and you can see that we have a vessel here, probably is a desulfurizer and we have the PSAs here and the tail gas drum. And finally the biggest one that I have to show you and you can see the, the size of the man here and the size of the furnace building and we have the flue gas stack here. It is where we have the draft inducer and you can see that in this picture the plant still is under construction and here we have a flare and the tail gas drum probably and the PSAs, hydrogen pipeline and here in this unit we have the water shift reactor. Here we have a bank of air coolers in order that we can condensate the steam and send the hydrogen to the PSAs. So this is the overview of a field, of a plant installed in the field and it is very important that you have this kind of understanding between the process flow diagram or block flow diagram and the field installation. Besides that, you need to know how to read a piping instrumentation diagram related to your process and my mentees at my training program has a full understanding of a hydrogen plant production using steam methane reformer and we see everything there since the controls and every equipment for this kind of process. And here you have a uh, steam methane reforming process simulation done in Unisyn Design and you can see how complex it is to, to build in order that you have the natural gas entering in your process simulation and the hydrogen going out from simulation. And now you will learn how to add and set a equilibrium reactor to your process simulation. To let your life easier, I did this block flow diagram where you can see the gas composition and process, process conditions and also the reaction that we use to set our equilibrium reactor. 
to download this PDF, you need to join my Telegram channel in process. You just need to go to my website, jeffersoncosta.com, and look for the in process link or the Telegram link at the main page. To save time, I already prepared my simulation, but if you don't know how to add an equilibrium reactor to the simulation, you just need to go to the object palette and look for the general reactors. And once you do a one click here, it will appear a set of reactors. And in this case, I choose the equilibrium reactor. To converge the equilibrium reactor, we need to add the, a set of reactions to equipment. And to do that, we need to return to the enter basis environment and click in the reactions tab. After that, we click on add reaction. And in this case, we are looking for equilibrium, add reaction. And you can name your reaction. And what is most important is to, to choose the components and set the stoic coefficients. If you don't remember what are the coefficients, they are the number of moles that you have in your reaction. In this case, we have one mole of each element or each component to produce one mole of each product. And the only care that you must take when you set in your reaction is that the raw material coefficients will be identified as minus and the products will be identified as positive numbers. So based on our block flow diagram, let's choose the raw materials that I need CO plus water to produce CO2 plus hydrogen. And in the stoic coefficients, I will inform minus one and minus one to the raw material and one and one to the products. See that it already converted. And now I will, I will add a set of reactions. And I need to choose my, my reaction set. And if you wish, you can change the name. I will not do that now. And the last step is add that to our fluid package. So if you have more than one fluid package, you need to choose the one you want. In this case, I have only one. So once it is added, we just need to return to simulation environment and do a double click in the equipment. And now I will set first the delta P in the, in the equipment because as it has a catalytic bed, I will lose some pressure there. And finally, I go to reactions and I need to choose my set. And once I do that, the Unicin do the calculations and the equilibrium reactor converted. Just to compare the results, I will add the table. And you can compare with your block flow diagram the, that the results are the same. So this is the way that we add an equilibrium reactor to our process simulation. In fact, it is very easy when you, when you know what you are doing. And the most important is to understand the process and the operational issues. For instance, in real life, we never use one-to-one -one, uh, steam to CO. And you can see that by my simulation that we have much more water than we have CO in this case. And to explain you why we don't do that, I will return to the block flow diagram. In a real steam methane reformer plant, we control the carbon ratio between steam and the hydrocarbon. To do that, we measure the hydrocarbon flow 
and also the steam flow. And we control the relationship with three parts of steam to one part of hydrocarbon. That kind of control is based on or in mass flow or in volume flow. And we do that because if we have any variation in the steam flow, we will guarantee that we have enough flow to not produce cork inside our furnace. Moreover, when we start the plant, we preheat that, as I already told you, with nitrogen. And before entering with natural gas, first we introduce steam in the furnace. And once everything is set and is okay, we introduce the natural gas to our system to guarantee that we will not form coke in the furnace. And in the other hand, if the plant shuts down, first we cut the hydrocarbon and after that we cut the steam from the system. This way we keep a safe operation and the integrity of the equipment. To add the equilibrium reactor to your Aspen High C simulation is quite the same of the units in design. The only difference is the menus that you need to access to add the, the information about the reaction. The equilibrium reactor object you can find in the model palette and you can go to reactor and you will see here the symbol for this object. When you add that to the process simulation, you can see that it, that it is the same of the Unicin design. And to set your chemical reactions, you need to go to the properties and you have the folder reactions. And there you will add your reaction. And to activate that, you do a double click and set the equation for the equipment. Once finished, you need to add to fluid package also and return to the simulation. When you do a double click in the equilibrium reactor, you need to go to the reaction tab and choose your reaction set. And once you do that, if your reaction set is okay, the equilibrium reactor will convert. Of course, that there are small differences in the results from one process simulation software to another, but that is not enough to us worry about right now. So my friend, this is what I would like to teach you. And my name is Jefferson Costa. I'm a chemical process engineer with expertise in plant design. And I see you soon in the next video.